Look at the sentence. This statement is false. Is it true or false? If it's true, that means that this statement is false. Is true, so it's false. But the statement can't be both true and false at the same time. That must mean it's false. But if this statement is false, is false, that means the statement is true. And once again, it's both true and false. So the statement can't be true, but it can't be false either. How can this be? Has everything we learned been a lie? I knew my math teacher was evil. Turns out this conundrum is called the liar paradox, and today I will show you how to solve it. If you look up the liar paradox on Wikipedia, you'll see that many people claim to have solved it. Arthur Pryor reasons that every statement implicitly states that it itself is true. For example, "My dog stepped on a bee" actually means this statement is true and my dog stepped on a bee. So this statement is false is equivalent to saying this statement is true and this statement is false. That's clearly a false sentence. No contradiction here. However, I like Saw Kripke's solution better. Basically, he says that only statements you can physically verify in the real world can be true or false. So statements like "Star Wars was directed by George Lucas" or "A proton has more mass than an electron" or "Pineapple is good on pizza" are true. And statements like "All horses are white" or "Alex doesn't make science videos" or "The Rise of Skywalker was a good movie" are false. However, this statement is false isn't a statement about any measurable aspect of the real world, so it doesn't need to be true or false. This may seem pretty neat at first, but wait, don't some statements not say anything about the real world? Like one plus one equals two? Sure, if you put one apple in the box, then add another apple, there are now two apples. But that's not exactly the same as one plus one equals two, is it? Well, that brings us to my preferred resolution to the liar paradox. I think most mathematicians know this intuitively, but for some reason, no one bothered to add it to our Wikipedia page. True and false aren't just any old words; they have precise meanings in mathematics. All mathematical systems have a vocabulary and grammar to write statements. They also have some axioms that you can assume are true. Then, if you can prove a statement from the axioms, it is also true. For example, if I create a system with the axioms "every cat is cute" and "Shumai is a cat." Then the statement "Shumai is cute" is true because it follows from the axioms. In most mathematics, we use an axiomatic system called ZFC. No, I won't bother explaining what it stands for. We can translate many familiar statements into the language of ZFC, like one plus one equals two, the inner angles of a triangle sum to 180 degrees, and not all problems can be solved by computers. However, this statement is false has yet to be translated into ZFC. The problem is that our funny little statement here requires self-reference. There's no way for a statement to talk about itself in ZFC. So this statement does not cause any contradictions because it only exists in English. And if you've ever had a misunderstanding with anyone, you know how willy-nilly English can be. That's not to say statements with self-reference are always useless. When Kurt Godel devised a way to make a statement refer to itself. He discovered Godel's first incompleteness theorem and threw all of mathematics into chaos. It says that any consistent logic system will always have statements that can neither be proved nor disproved. Wow! I'll never trust my math teacher again. One statement that can never be proved in ZFC is there are infinities between the number of integers and the number of real numbers. And no, this doesn't fix the liar paradox. As another example of self-reference, when Alan Turing realized you can pass a computer program's source code into itself, he discovered the halting problem, and that computers will never be able to solve all problems. This type of thinking is the foundation of computation theory. Godel's incompleteness theorem is way above our pay grade to explain here, but I can't possibly conclude this video without showing you the power of self-reference. So. Here's the halting problem. 
When given an input, a computer program can either finish running after a while or just run forever. It's just like Internet Explorer. The question is, can you write a computer program to decide whether another program will eventually stop? Let's do a proof by contradiction. Suppose there were a program H that can tell you whether any program will halt on some input. Keep in mind that H gives you the answer within a finite amount of time. It always halts itself. Then we can write a computer program P like this. The program P takes in the input N. Use H to check if N halts when we pass its source code into itself. Since H exists and always halts, this will always work. If N halts, run forever. If N doesn't halt, end the program. Now we ask the question, what happens when you pass P into itself? Well, according to what we wrote here, it first checks whether P halts on P's own source code. We don't know whether it does, so let's consider both possibilities. If P halts on its own source code, then these instructions say we should run forever. In other words, when we execute P with input P, it runs forever. But we just assume that P halts on P, so this is a contradiction. Okay, what about if P doesn't halt on its own source code? Well, then the instructions tell us to halt. So P does halt on P. Again, that contradicts our assumption. In other words, this program P cannot exist because then running P on itself can neither halt nor not halt. Remember, P is only possible if there's a program H that can always tell you whether a program will halt. So since P is not possible, H must not exist. Therefore, it is impossible to write a program that will always tell you whether another program halts. You might have noticed that this proof is really similar to the liar paradox. However, it is not itself a paradox, but instead a proof by contradiction. Additionally, unlike the liar paradox, it can be written in rigorous mathematical language, not just English. Because the halting problem is mathematically rigorous, we can actually use it to further our mathematical understanding. There are actually things our computers would never be able to do, no matter how powerful they become. Isn't that just so mind-boggling? And people say computer science is boring. We can even use this result in real life. We now know it's fruitless to try to write such a program. But for now, all the liar paradox has achieved is getting referenced occasionally in science fiction. Because unlike Godot's incompleteness theorems or the halting problem, it lacks mathematical formalism. Okay, that might sound pretty boring, but mathematical and scientific formalism is one of the cornerstones of modern society. And today, let's celebrate it with the long overdue resolution of the liar paradox. What is the solution to the liar paradox? It's that this statement is false, is neither a verifiable statement about the real world, nor convertible into any actionable mathematical language. <laughs> <laughs>